Shout out to the presenting sponsor of Family Trips, the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria, the EV for people who love to drive. Here we go. Hi, Pashi. Hi, Sufi. We're about to do another episode of our show, but we, as promised, we can discuss the fact that we just had a family trip together. You and mom and dad came in and visited me and my family. Yeah. And we actually we said we were going to be in the same room for our first podcast, but we ended up being in different rooms because it's better audio. Yeah. So uh, for all of that, when we recorded this episode with our friend uh, Jake Tapper, we were in different rooms. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really uh, it was really fun to be out there. Boys were very happy to see you. You had a good time with the kids. Good time with the kids. And I got to say that little one, she is a flower and sunshine and joy. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know there are times when she cries and yells, but I'm sort of not uh, called into duty in those moments. So I really get the best of Addie. Do you feel like you think Addie is sunshine and flowers because her two older brothers are just full-time ass aches? (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like you got about half best of boys and half full-time ass aches. Yeah, it was a mix. You brought um, parachute men for the boys, and I will say they enjoyed parachute men a great a great deal. Yeah, I shouldn't be so nervous when I bring like a toy for the kids, but I'm like, well, I hope these are good parachutes. Yeah, the parachutes were good. They were, there was a rock. The boys went up on a rock, and they threw the parachute men, and they uh, they actually worked. They looked like what you would want them to look like when you buy a toy with a picture on the box. And then, yeah, your, your middle son, Axel, wanted to go up onto a balcony and throw them out. And part of me, like he threw one and it just ended up right on the roof. And part yeah. of me wanted you guys to be gone and to come back and to see eight parachute men sort of speckled on your roof. Yeah, um, that's the sort of thing that my wife would react to in a very chill way plastic parachute men on the roof of our <laughs> of our home I, if i know her and again i've known i mean we've not been together for almost 15 years i feel like she'd say look at that garbage on our roof i like that <laughs> i like that <laughs> i like that that makes me that, that reminds me of, of youth and and yeah. uh and and joy mm. um we had uh we had one night where our oldest came out and had dinner with us which was very fun stayed yeah. up way past his bedtime yeah and he showed up he also I feel like he had thrown an outfit together. This has been happening a lot. I'm glad you're bringing this up. He threw an outfit together because he got a chance last minute to come to dinner. Right. And it looks like he grabbed stuff that maybe he wore two or three years ago, or it's stuff that belonged to his younger brother because he looked like it was like, it's like those British schoolboys who look like they're wearing like shorts and a uniform, but it's all very small insanely short shorts i think the problem is both of those things are true they are a clothes he used to wear and and b his little brother's clothes because it's just hand me down so i understand his confusion he opens up a drawer he's just been told if you get dressed fast you can come to dinner with your grandparents yeah. and your uncle and i mean it's a look it's very short shorts very high socks and too small a sweater too yeah, no, I mean, he had, they were hand-me-downs that he turned into take backs <laughs> He did. He wore an outfit of take backs yeah. And, uh, but yes, it was, uh, it was very nice. It was very nice to have you all here. I'm extremely happy when I have my parents and my kids all in the same place. And that was great. And, oh, the other exciting thing was we didn't know how quickly Addie would process that you were poshy. Yeah, because the last time I saw her, she just called me daddy. Yeah. As evidenced by the fact that if you're listening to this, not only do we look a lot alike, we sound a lot alike. So you were getting a lot of daddy last time, but she was great. I would say the second she saw you, she was locked in on Pashi. Yeah. And then it's like, it's such a satisfying thing. I'm sure as a grandparent, as an uncle, as anyone who's sort of related to a small child, when they start saying your name and they say it with such delight, it's it you can't help but be happy every time she says it like That's our conversations true. weren't deep but they didn't need to be <laughs> you guys didn't really yeah you didn't get into it it was all very surface but it was very nice yeah um there was um uh you know obviously this will you know time stamp uh, when you visited but um 
uh, some very something very sad happened uh, while you're here. Uh, Paul Rubens, known for playing Pee Wee Herman, passed away, and you, he was a dear friend of yours. Yeah, I uh, I was in. He did a play of uh, of Pee Wee that we did out in Los Angeles, and then we took to Broadway. And through that process, I didn't know him previously when I got the audition for sort of a Pee Wee show. I didn't know if it was a movie. Uh, or a TV show. I did not think it was a play, but I went to this audition and then I got cast. I was a firefighter and did a lot of puppet voices, but sort of through that time of the run of the show here and then the run of the show on Broadway, we got to be very close and he lived uh, he lived in the neighborhood. So I'd spent so many nights sitting up in his kitchen, just talking and I, you know, I loved him. I loved Pee Wee as a child. I love the playhouse. I love Big Adventure. And getting to know him and call him friend, I consider myself very lucky. And he was so funny. And he had all of those sort of peewee quips would come out all the time. If you said, I just need a minute, he would say, who has that kind of time? Um, he, <laughs> if you said you loved something, he would say, why don't you marry it? Uh, he, he was always so fast with those things that seem so sort of like, I don't know, so childish, but when done, when delivered well, and when delivered by him, it just, it was, yeah, it was pure joy. And, uh, and he also like, there was something in the show, you know, we, we worked together to try and make some parts of that show work a little bit better. I'd pitch jokes and there was something in the show. I really forget what it is. I need to watch it again. Um, and it would never land. It was a joke in the show that would never land. And I would come up with alternative jokes for it. And I would be like, what about this? What about this? Like, it's just dying. It dies on the vine every night. And he would say, oh, he's like, I get so excited every night to know that that joke's going to bomb. <laughs> and... It's so like, it's just, he had a different way of looking at the world and it's, it's things like that. He also, this like, it's just sort of blew my mind. I was, I was crushed uh, when I heard he passed and I was looking back at our messages and on my birthday this year, he sent me, he started, he had started doing Cameo, um, which is like an app where you can pay celebrities to send of you a course. personalized video message. He's a perfect person for that. He's a perfect person for that. And I dare say that he probably gave everyone whatever they asked for and he delivered. I don't think he ever mailed it in. I know yeah. for a fact that he would like take a day out of his week and he would only do so many, but he would take a day and he would try to do a good job on them. So he was doing that which I had kind of forgotten about. But on my birthday this year, he sent me what is essentially a cameo. But it is so heartfelt. And when he passed, I like scrolled through and I, I watched it because it's like, you know, people are always, they say like, you know, say what you want to say to people while you have the time, you know, tell them that you love them, tell them how important you are. And in this message, it's like two and a half minutes. And he is, says the nicest, most heartfelt things to me and the world, and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then I called Lynn Marie Stewart, who played uh, Missy Vaughn, and has kind of been in all the Pee Wee stuff. And I was talking to her, just remembering Paul. And I said, well, he sent me this video. And she's like, oh yeah, he sent those to everyone. Um, and apparently on people's birthdays this last year, I and it's it's pretty general, and I hadn't quite considered it but I feel like the message that he sent me about how important I was to him and how much he loved me and admired me I feel like there might be countless versions of this out there um which is just which just makes me laugh well I should also say that you know I, I had him on the show I was also a fan of his but because of you I got to be friendly with him, and one thing you could count on was that he would send you a Christmas card every year. Yeah. And the two people from my youth that are massively important to me that I am so happy to say I received Christmas cards from were uh, Paul, who was always on the card, dressed like Pee Wee Herman, and Weird Al. And mm. I, when I think back to our youth and there was something, uh, I don't know, there was a similarity with both of them because they just came from this really 
there was something mischievous about what they were doing that appealed so much to kids. And yeah. it's really cool. There, there were two people who meeting them never let you down at all. They were everything you needed them to be. So um, rest in peace, Paul Rubens. Yeah, who was, yeah. really going to miss him. But man, what, what a legend. And, and, you know, prior to his passing 4th of July this year, there's a, a cemetery in Los Angeles called Hollywood Forever, and they show movies on the weekends. And the 4th of July movie this year was Big Adventure with fireworks at the end. And I... I've seen it, I can't tell you how many times, but we went and there are so many things in that movie. There are so many jokes that you forget about. And it's so, it's so good. People were so happy to be there. And uh, yeah, yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace, uh, Paul Rubens. And before we get to the wonderful uh, Jake Tapper, we want to remind everybody that we're going to do a listener episode. We want to hear your stories about trips you took uh, during Labor Day or at the end of the summer. Also, if you have any questions for uh, Josh and I, you can record them. Just go to speakpipe.com backslash family trips pod. We are begging you to do this because one of our producers sent a message to us that was submitted as anonymous, I think. (laughs) Definitely our dad. It's definitely (laughs) our dad. And guys, we don't, the last thing we want is for our listener episode to become more conversations with our parents. So please participate. Yeah. So that we can get some fresh voices. <laughs> yeah. Also, I feel like he's trying to like work the, uh, work the jury. Yeah. Uh, he's basically saying that he didn't think that the, that our mom was nice enough to our dad on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, we'll probably end up playing it. I mean, I think, look, if I had to put money on it, you're going to hear that message. But we'd also like to hear from you. So uh, do uh, uh, leave us a message, speakpipe.com backslash family trips pod. And now our wonderful conversation with Jake Tapper. Yeah. Yeah. How's it going? Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> Jake is wearing a late night with Seth Meyers shirt. I only have about 30 different to cho- uh, options to choose from. I went with old, this is kind of like old school, just like regular, not like one of the options. No, that's so, actually a limited edition. Is that the oh, Washington, Washington D.C. That's limited from the edition. week we did shows in Washington D.C. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I, I did, I, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I was, and you were a guest for us, correct? Yes. Yes, I have many of these, and I was going to do the gag where I take it off, and I have another one on <laughs> underneath. Yeah. But then I have these microphones, uh, whatever they are, earbuds in my ear. That also it, a far yeah. better gag for a visual medium. Yeah. That's right. I was, <laughs> I was thinking you would have done it as a gag at the Washington, D.C. event, which would have No, been but great. I was already told of who did it. Uh, it was like John Bon Jovi or somebody came out, Seth told me, like wearing the shirt with the bag and the coffee mug. That it was, um, it was, uh, it was a uh, musician, definitely Horowitz from the Beastie yeah. Boys. Okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny because this is people always said, you know, who was your favorite guest? And and Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys, a yeah. band that means a, a you know a great deal to me. Of course, he came out wearing the T-shirt. This is all in the guest tote backstage. He yeah. came out wearing the T-shirt, tote bag over his shoulder, and a coffee mug full of red wine. <laughs> it's so, it's so and good. It's also funny because if you said who is the musician least like Ad Rock, I would say uh, Bon Jovi, and yet that is what your memory. <laughs> well, you're I knew such he, a I, you're such a Philly Homer. I well, that he's you a, he's redid a, the story. Well, he, he well Bon Jovi's a Jersey guy, not not a Philly guy, but sure, sure. But for the rest of us, you know that's the same. But well, I guess it was just to me. It was just like it, I knew he was from the tri-state area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are both cool guys, but yeah. that's not. I hope nobody's knocking John Bon Jovi here. Yeah, I don't know what the JBJ hatred is. That seems like a little, and I, and the, I definitely don't think the opposite of Ad Rock is JBJ. Like to me, like the opposite of Ad Rock would be like, I don't know, somebody from Slipknot or like. Okay, <laughs> interesting. JBJ didn't he own a Philadelphia Arena football team? Wasn't oh. there some? Oh, that might be right. 
That I do. There right. is some reason that I, I mean, obviously I, I know he's a famously a Jersey guy, but I also do feel like I did see him wearing a Philadelphia Jersey. I will tell you <laughs> so, that when the Democrats uh, do their like end of election rally in Philly, they always steal a bunch of Jersey people and <laughs> bring them. There. It's, a, <laughs> it's never like, you know, I mean, we, we actually have a pretty good group. It would be like pink. Uh, yeah. But, you know, then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're in Hall and Oates territory. You know, Frankie yeah. Valley. I don't know. You know, it's it's some they somehow they convinced Springsteen and JBJ to cross the river and like sure. we, and we claim them. We claim them. That'd be fair enough. I think that is I think it's close enough that you're allowed, especially in times of uh elections. Oh, sure, somebody yeah. from New Hampshire would say that. Now, real quick, <laughs> hey, whoa, I do whoa, also want to I want to point out the limited edition late night with Seth Myers in Washington DC t shirt is even more limited than this because we traveled our show exactly one time. In October of 2016, we took our show to the Warner Theater in D.C., and it was really fun, uh, but it's really expensive yeah. to travel a show. And the, you know what the reality is? It doesn't make a single difference in ratings. No one at home who is not a Seth Meyers viewer thinks, oh, got to see how that show goes down in D.C. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different crowd. It's different a crowd. different crowd. Instead yeah. of let's see, let's see if you can make this uh, this New York City humor work in Washington D.C. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah, the yeah. Guests didn't have to take the Acela to do this show. <laughs> yeah, I should do it in the deepest, the reddest county in America. That oh would be. God. I think then you'd tune in for it. Yeah, I mean, then you know, but it would it would end tragically. I mean, it would well, be, be like it, it would be, be like, like your the, last show. the Blues Brothers. It would be I think it would start like the Blues Brothers. Obviously, we'd have chicken wire up. And then <laughs> ideally, I'd I'd win the crowd over. Yeah. With the with the rendition of maybe Stand By Your Man. Yeah. I, I don't I don't see that happening, but I, but I appreciate the conf- <laughs> I appreciate the optimism. I appreciate the optimism. Jake, I forgot this. Uh, or I, maybe I never even knew it. Born in Staten Island. Yeah. So this is jarring because I, I think we're maybe only 10, 11 guests in, and I believe you're our third guest native to Staten Island. Well, I would is, really I would really not call myself native to Staten Island. I do I do bring it out every now and then just because it's a, yes. such an odd, unexpected birthplace. I, first of yeah. all, I think that a lot of people like misidentify me as a New Yorker, probably the same way they do for you, both of right. you, I would imagine, mm-hmm. for probably a lot of the same stereotypical reasons. Yes. Uh, but uh, but even those who know I'm from Philly, like I think the Staten Island thing takes them by surprise. I don't really have like a Staten Island vibe. No, I, we only, I did want to bring it up because our friends, uh, Pete Davidson and Colin Joseph recently bought a decommissioned Staten Island ferry. I'm and aware. based on conversations with them, they'd love another investor <laughs> to throw <laughs> some good money after bad. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm much more. That it, it's probably more likely that I'd go in on a, you know, like a cheesesteak uh, shop with Rob sure. McElhaney than McElhaney than than uh, than that. I'm not. I don't really identify as a Staten Islander, and I and I certainly yeah. don't identify as myself a as terrible businessman or or cool <laughs> enough to hang with uh, Davidson and, I and will Scarlett say, Johansson's husband. I mean, I don't think that. It, I, yeah, I guess based on what they're if they're trying to create some party vibe with their new yeah, Staten not, Island ferry. I mean, in the same way, look, they haven't come to me either. So I think that uh, I'm not, no judgment, but Davidson, Jost, Tapper. <laughs> I don't say like, a, I mean, unless they want to turn it into like a news ferry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's, you know. The, maybe different floors of the ferry. You would, you know, the ground floor would be, that's where you go for your news. And then you go up <laughs> and they're kind so of goofing people, on the news. <laughs> people like, there's nothing like seafaring and news at the same time. The two, the two things. Two great tastes. Tickets still available. <laughs> You have one sibling. I do. I have one one blood sibling and three step siblings. Okay. Did you ever travel with the step siblings? Yes. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. My dad remarried when I was ten, and so all of a sudden we're splitting our time between my mom's house and my dad and my stepmom. And the there was one older stepsister and two younger stepsisters, and we're all within like five or six years of each other. And it was nothing like the Brady Bunch, but everybody would be like, oh, it's like the Brady Bunch. But it's not like it wasn't anything like the Brady Bunch. Would you say in general, the five of you got along? Yeah, we were fine. Okay. I mean, we still keep in touch. We we're st- still see them at reunions. Yeah. I mean, and when I and publicly, I'll refer to them as my sisters just because I feel like it's just 
I feel like saying that they're my stepsisters inserts like yes. a whole. Uh, it, it, I feel like it's presumptuous. I'm like saying you want to know more about this, don't you? And it's yeah. like, and no one does. <laughs> it's also let's say that that uh, Disney did a giant disservice to stepsisters in in particular, and so to to even invoke the idea of stepsisters, I think uh, it seems as though there was I- issues. Yeah. Also, how come step? Well, except step brothers isn't really a thing, right? Except for that one movie, step brothers that, isn't. There's yeah. no s- stereotypes about us. No. There should be. You guys get off scot free. Except, I mean, I guess that one movie, you're dumb as a bag of rocks. It's a great movie. <laughs> it is yeah. a great movie. Fantastic movie. I have my kids, my boys sleep in bunk beds. And every time I, I think about bunk beds, I think about a bunk, the top bunk collapsing on the bottom bunk constantly. I had bunk beds with my brother. Josh uh, and I did too. Yeah, yeah we had I had beds. I had the, uh, I think I had the upper bunk because I was the older. Seth, you're the older, right? I'm the older, but we were talking, we're with our parents right now, and my mom was asking, and Josh recalls him having the top bunk. Yeah. Huh. I think it was because Seth was afraid. Yeah, fear. Yeah. Fear led a lot of my decisions. I remember uh, Aaron, my little brother, who is now 6'6". Six, six. Aaron, we thought this was really funny. He would lie in the bottom bunk. He must have been like three, and I must have been like seven. And he would put his foot up, and I would reach down, and I would just grab his foot, and we just thought this was the funniest thing in the world. I thought it was funny because <laughs> his foot was so little. I just remember yeah. laughing because his foot was so little. But I mean, when you're that age, the the stuff that makes you laugh. Well, also, this was before iPads. So pretty much <laughs> right. grabbing That's, feet. And cable. Yeah. And cable. So just like if you could if you could put your hand on a human foot. There was books and holding foot. <laughs> <laughs> holding holding feet and books. That's what we did back then. So in- how young are you guys when your parents get divorced? I'm uh so like I'm like eight and Aaron's like four. What were family trips like before uh, your parents uh, went their separate ways? I remember, um, f- you know, vo- visiting uh, my grandparents in North Carolina, my mom's parents. I remember camping trips, but I don't remember my mom being on them. I remember my dad doing them maybe with like one of his college or med school friends who brought his sons. Got I think it. my mom opted out of the camping trips because it was real. It was real camping. It was there were no trailers. There was no RV. It was tents on the ground. Was it? Were you in campgrounds? Like was it car camping still, or were you hiking in with gear and setting it up sort of in the middle of the woods or by a stream with nobody else around? Some something in between. Like it was definitely okay. a campgrounds, but it wasn't like with a big bathroom and right. community shower. It was definitely r- rough and not particularly fun, as I recall. <laughs> oh, interesting. Because I, I sort of now would, would think of you as sort of being pro-camping and pro-outdoorsy. I'm definitely pro-outdoorsy, and I have no problem with I, – I actually, I'm very uh, pro-outdoorsy. We, you know, we, we go to Idaho and we fish and all that stuff. He goes to Idaho with Jimmy Kimmel, everybody. Well, you don't have to make it sound less rugged than oh, look, I was we've all to... seen the big Instagram of all of Jake's. Somehow Jake, the newsman Jake Tapper has so many more famous friends than I do. And I've been in this biz. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tapper's got you beat for how long he's been in the biz. So. Um, I know, but he's, look, it's, but he's news biz. <laughs> well, look, if he was, you know. Well, that just means I bring something different to the that's table. True. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I, um, I think you're right. There's a lot of uh, redundancies with what I would bring. There were two, I mean, there were two Jimmies in that picture. There were two late night host Jimmies. Yeah. I would be the yeah. third. And you weren't there, sir? So it was no. Kimmel, Fallon, Tapper, and no, no, no just Colbert. a bunch of, yeah. yeah. Dax, right? Dax was there. Great guy. And by the way, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm not airing your, your laundry in public here. There were, there were Instagram posts. This has been. Well, Kristen Bell posted it, not just for the record. It wasn't me. Mm. Right. But I, just for the record, it's out there. I'm also not breaking news right correct correct it's it's been out there yeah yeah it's like i didn't yeah i didn't put together the dossier but like you can report on it i reported on its existence i did not report on the contents just for the record I did the same i did just, the same for what it's worth just for the I think record we both approached that the same way <laughs> <laughs> yeah um Do you know that uh, you know the dossier i know we're getting off track here but you know okay. that uh you know who my guest was the day the dossier news broke holy crap i do remember this i do remember this it was kellyanne conway 
Kellyanne Conway. Yeah. And it broke while she was in the dressing room. And I, we felt it was only right to go to her dressing room. And I had printed out the CNN my story. story. My story, yeah. That yeah, I wrote you're with Jay, a... And I said, hey, I, do you know about this? And she's like, what is it? And I, I handed it to her. And she, she just sort of skimmed it real quick. And uh, very, uh, very uh, politely and very quickly looked at me and said, I'm going to need a few minutes. And, uh, and uh, I, I walked out. She's a pro. She is a pro. Let's just make one thing clear. She is a, she is a pro. Um, all right. So we got off track. So you, now you sort of, obviously you camp with the stars. We've established this. You're, <laughs> it's you're fishing. It's what we fly fish. We fly fish. Was there any fishing in your early family trips? No. Is that a thing? No. Okay. I would have liked it, by the way. I mean, that sounds fun. Uh, and that's an activity. Camping, just for the record, is not particularly an activity. It's just setting up. And then survival. It's just, you know, okay, now we need to light a fire. Now we need to put out the fire. Now we go to bed. The roughing it thing wasn't particularly fun. And then later, I did an RV with my mom and my brother. We did an RV trip up to Canada and through Maine and back. And then we did a camper trip with my dad and my stepmom and my stepsisters and my brother. Also, I think, to Canada. Yeah. And those weren't particularly fun either. Josh and I didn't take many camping trips, but that is also my memory, is there were no activities. And I wouldn't say that I wish I'd fished more, but I do think it would have given more purpose to being in the woods. In defense of camping. <laughs> okay. You're a camper? Here we go. I love Here camping. We go. Josh, Josh, it should be noted, <laughs> is in the, in the pocket of big camping. Yeah. I love setting up a site. I love getting it, getting it all there. I love walking around sort of the campgrounds. I feel like you find the nicest people in the world in campgrounds, particularly in national parks, state parks. They're just, it's so friendly. And then it's sort of, you have your base of operations to go on hikes, to go fishing if you want to. I'm a big lawn game fan. So you can have any number of games that you play, sitting around conversation. I went camping with a friend on the beach recently and surfed. Really? Yeah. So that stuff's all great. I slept on the sand once. I slept on the sand once with my brother during like our errant 20s period when we would just like um, do trips, uh, sometimes in Europe, sometimes like let's go hang out. And, you know, we tried to crash with a friend at the beach, but they tried to charge us for sleeping on their floor and we didn't have any money. This is in our 20s. And so we ended up sleeping on the on the beach. And sand is remarkably like a um, Tempur-Pedic mattress. It's, it's quite yeah. nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it has really body memory yeah. uh, element to it. <laughs> Which beach? Where, where? Where were you? This feels like it was one of the Delaware beaches, which is where people go when they live in D.C. There's a a, a run of. Um, By the way, you because you mentioned Europe, I had elevated so high up where you and your brother were sleeping on the beach, and the fact that it oh, was no. the shore, the Delaware, the Delaware shore, <laughs> not even the Jersey shore. It just collapsed for me. No, the the trips that we did in Europe were were like real hostel, H O S T E L, yes, um, hostel trips. Like in where did we go? We went to Greece. We went to Spain. It was real. Like, how much money do you have in your pocket? Kind of trips. Like, do you did you love those? They were fun. I mean, Aaron, it was a good time to do them. And Aaron and I are very close, and we had no. Uh, obligations really in the world. On the Greece one, I took my girlfriend at the time and it was right after 9-11, which was not a fun time to be traveling abroad. Yeah. Um, although the planes were very empty. And um, that might've been our, our last trip because we got into a big fight because he had been studying in Egypt during 9-11. He's a religious studies major. He speaks Arabic, he speaks Hebrew, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, and I brought my, I wouldn't call her, spoiled or anything like it but i bought a girlfriend who was like you know it was like a big like we didn't understand that she brought a hair dryer with her to greece like to us that was like <laughs> yeah who, right who is this a rockefeller like you know <laughs> yeah you i hope you also brought an outlet because yeah. we're not good we're just gonna be sleeping on the beach <laughs> well, the idea, but that I means i remember thinking like what she brought a hair dryer like so outraged and like looking at it i'm like of course she brought a hair dryer what the hell but we got into a big fight about, <laughs> I remember this very vividly. We're in some cheap hotel in Greece. It was right after the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan. And I don't know if you remember this, but like the CIA put out like a, 
They were putting out flyers. They were dropping flyers everywhere in Afghanistan with a picture of like a westernized Osama bin Laden. It was like pro- part propaganda, part wanted poster. And it looked like Frank Zappa. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that at all? <laughs> I do. I do. It was like this image of Osama bin Laden. It was like, I mean, and my brother, to his credit, like, thought it was hilarious and ridiculous. And can you believe how insane the U.S. government has gone? And look, and like, you know, but we were, we had just been a city in a city that had been attacked in D.C., yes. you know, and we were cowering. And uh, anyway, we had a big fight. That was, uh, and that that might have been the last one of the of our family traps. The fight was between you and him. Yeah. So, do you feel like looking back that you maybe uh, incorrectly took your girlfriend's side? Correct. Yeah, but okay. it wasn't. You know, but it, but it wasn't like I was taking her side. Like we were both on the wrong side. We right. were both. We were both hiding under our desks. You know, hiding under the hotel bed. I mean, you know, that was just a. You know, everybody remembers well those of us old enough to remember after 9-11, like there was a lot of fear. And I definitely was experiencing a lot of it myself. I 100%. I remember uh, in the early days after it, a friend of mine had a cousin, an Israeli cousin, who was telling us all like, this is actually really good for you. Like this, what you've gone through, this is like, will only make you stronger sort of thing. Right. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't know if this is is the right time for this conversation. (laughs) Well, I mean, I wish I mean, I wish I had had my brother's attitude at the time, because like now looking back and doing like a lot of reporting on decisions that were made by the government, by people who are supposed to have a more clear eyed view of it all. I wish I had been more clear eyed about it all at that exact moment. It was a tough time to be clear. eyed. Now, do you also even independent of taking a trip with your brother and your girlfriend after 9-11? Is that a good idea anytime? No. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Definitely not. It's not Definitely a great not. lineup. No, yeah, it it's a bad idea. Yeah. Because with everything that uh, we could, uh, you know, 9-11 led to so many terrible things. But um, I don't, I feel like this, it's unfair to pin this on 9-11 as well. It feels like this. <laughs> was doomed from the start. Yeah, this, you, this came from, you know, inside inside the house. It came from, a right. It, this was, you can't put this on Al-Qaeda, right? No, this is, <laughs> yeah, this, 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 there's this, a this lot. Was, and look, this I'm was a gonna, bad decision. I'm, I'm not going to give them a free pass on anything, but right. I, I feel no, like. No, it's, it's fair. This is a bad decision to, to yeah. go. I should either go to Greece with my girlfriend or with my brother, but not with both of my girlfriend and my brother. I agree. That's, yeah. that's smart. Josh and I have traveled with our uh, significant others a couple times. And I feel like yeah, that, but we each yes. had one. You we each right. had one. Yeah, we never did. Josh and I really didn't. You know, we worked together in Amsterdam, um, but we didn't. I wouldn't say we ever traveled much. We took that adventure together, but we had our own. We we, we never were on the road together. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna take a quick break and hear from some of our sponsors. This episode of Family Trips is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. And Josh, we took a lot of road trips. I'm deeply resentful, regretful that we never did it in a car as nice as the Nissan Aria. I mean, it's comfortable, smooth ride, nice tech. Here's what the good people at Nissan have said about this car. It is a vehicle that has available 389 horsepower with instant responsiveness while simultaneously featuring a design so elegant It's literally described as timeless Japanese futurism. What I wouldn't give to be described that way. Literally, also. I don't know if I don't know if you could be described literally as timeless Japanese futurism. Maybe sarcastically? Yeah. But the but the Nissan Aria, literally timeless Japanese futurism. Real quick for our listeners, tell us a little bit about E-Force all-wheel drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this E-Force. It sort of means that Nissan's advanced system that delivers a powerful and smooth drive, superior control and handling, confidence in all surface conditions, and comfort for all passengers. That is probably how I would have described it as well. Yeah. Or I would have just said it's super cool. Stop asking questions. Yeah, that sounds more like you. (laughs) Yeah, just just enjoy the E-Force all-wheel drive. So thanks again to Nissan for sponsoring this episode of Family Trips. Go to nissanusa.com slash aria. Now you, disclaimer voice, go. E-Force cannot prevent collisions or provide enhancement traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Hey, Josh, can we uh, take a second to uh, talk about Element? Yes, please. You know, it's a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need, nothing you don't. A lot of salt, no sugar. So they sent a bunch of Element to us. Yeah. And you've been traveling. So I had received my Element and you had not. And you came to visit and it pained me 
to part with some of my element and give it to you, but now you have it. My prediction with all uh, flavored drinks is that orange is going to be my favorite. With element, feel very strongly about grapefruit. I don't know if you've gotten into the grapefruit yet, but that is uh, the, the winner for me. Yeah, I've been leaning on the citrus flavors, but it's, uh, yeah, it's time to mix it up. This is exciting because right now Element is offering a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors. I don't know all eight. I am, I am, ha- I'm sorry to report that ham is not a flavor. <laughs> Eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash trips. This deal is only available through our link. You must go to drink, D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash trips. And Element offers no questions asked refunds. Try it totally risk-free. If you don't like it, share it with a salty friend and they will give you your money back. No questions asked. You got nothing to lose. Getting back real quick to fly fishing. Now I have a lot of friends who love fly fishing. It's great. It's so I've done great. it once. Hated it. Just hate really? it. Really? Yeah, I did. I've done it once too. We were in a boat and we had a guide. And so there were two people in each boat and a guide. And he just would say like, cast, mend it, cast, mend it, cast, mend it. And it was like so repetitive. And I just wanted it to be over. And I would I would try it again when you're sort of just standing stationary in the water. But for me, because my good friends haven't been able to explain it, but I just I don't get it. Yeah, sell it. Sell it, Tapper. I find it very zen. I find okay. it very um, like everything is out of my brain except for trying to catch fish, which is yeah. uh, I don't. And like I know people like I think Stephanopoulos meditates. I know a bunch of people who meditate and I I don't even think I could ever even come close to meditating. I just can't. There's so much junk in my brain. I can't get it out. And uh, I can't not think about anything. And it's just impossible for me. But fly fishing is the closest I can come to that because I'm only thinking about the objective at hand. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I will say I do meditate. But if I was meditating and somebody kept saying, cast, mend it, <laughs> mend it. Well, maybe you had a bad guy. Mend it. I mean, is, it, is yeah. that not just possible that you had a That's bad guy? That's possible. That's possible. I mean, he never stopped saying the same two words over and over and over again. It was really, it was, yeah. So there's this late night host named Jimmy Kimmel. Uh-huh. Sure, sure. And he's got <laughs> a dear a, friend. A dear a friend, friend of And he's got a fishing yeah. lodge in uh, in Idaho. And yeah. Like I would, I can hook you up if you want. Right. To I'd love to go. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to go. Yeah. I think Seth is not into it, but uh, oh no, but I would go. I would go to a famous person's lodge. I the one time I went fly fishing, I uh, I hooked my own eyebrow. You have to wear gl- sunglasses. You have to wear big. Oh yeah, well thanks. I wish you'd been my guide. <laughs> you guys have had where have you, where are you going fly fishing? It's at New Hampshire. It sounds like it was a guy in an unmarked white van, <laughs> and it sort of it seemed like it had been very recently painted. Like where are you going? Like Lake not Erie proper stencil. It was, <laughs> no, I went. I was in Colorado. I was visiting friends in Colorado who were all enthusiasts for it. And they sort of believed if they took me out, I would also fall in love with it. So by the way, since, since this is about family vacations and such, like this is a great family vacation that we do every year, the, yeah. Idaho, the Idaho trip, because it's not just me and fancy, uh, fancy folks. Uh, you didn't mention, but Jennifer Aniston was there too and Jason Bateman. Mm. But, but mm. Um, it's yeah, not a pretty big list. Yeah. I mean, Corny Cox, uh, but uh, Mark Rober, if you're into Whoa. the YouTube and- David Chang, the chef. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's not important. Wow. None of that's none of that's important. <laughs> no, I mean it's cool though. <laughs> it's like um, that the wife goes off with a whole bunch of women and has a great day, and the kids go off with groups of kids. Like Alice, my daughter, runs off with Bateman's daughter and uh, and Adam Scott's daughter, and my son runs off with Bateman's son, uh, with uh, Adam it's Scott's amazing, son. Amazing, like just in this story, how you keep. Finding ways to drop new names. <laughs> I'm not dropping them. They're just, they're just there. They're sort of just tumbling out. PJ Claps, son. Uh, PJ, you know him. He's uh, John Knoxville. Uh, his son uh, is also there. Oh my God, you're such a good friend with Johnny Knoxville. You call him PJ. Well, that's his real name. Yeah, sure. I get it. So let me tell you, here's, here's a story that you might enjoy, even though it, it, it involves at least two names being dropped. But I've dropped Go so many it. already. Yeah. We are going to, I do want to say out of fairness to you, we are going to put in sound effects after this with just a giant clang. <laughs> okay. Every time you mention a celebrity. So well, ring once the bell, I drop, Jake. Well, but yeah. let me ask you a question. Once I drop a name, if I mention yeah. that name again, am I picking it up? 
No, but we're going to, if you mention it a second time, we're going to put in a boing sound effect as if it uh, <laughs> so ricocheted it's a back. Yeah, like it bounced. <laughs> so first time you say it, it's a clang and then a boing. You are the one who brought up the photo, just for the, for the record. That's true. I do think, I do want our listeners to know, I don't think Jake would have dropped all these names, but uh, the Pandora's box. You are the Pandora. I am the Pandora of this story. Anyway, so Jimmy Kimmel. Yep. Jimmy Kimmel tells my son and Graham Scott and Rocco Clapp that they can ride around on the golf carts. Great. Dream. A dream for kids. Yeah. Adam and I are fishing. Adam Scott and I are fishing. And I get a phone call from my son because there's been an accident. Now, obviously, this is terrifying because golf carts can actually kill people, as you know. Sure. Mm -hmm. Most important thing up front, nobody's seriously hurt. But he had flipped a golf cart, dented it, and um, because he and Graham and Rocco were, they weren't just like riding it around. They were doing like stunts and acting like you would expect teenage boys to act if you gave them permission to ride around in a golf cart. Especially if one of them was the um, son of PJ Claps. You're, you're way ahead of me. So Adam and I are furious. <laughs> And Adam and I are, you know, lecturing our sons from the banks of the Snake River on our cell phones and mad. And we're calling the guy that runs the lodge and we're saying, make them do manual labor and make them, you know, all this stuff. And, and I say to Adam, like, should we be getting PJ involved in this? And like, will he care? Will he remotely care? <laughs> And so PJ texts us out of the blue and he's just, this is Johnny Knoxville again. So he, and, he, and he's like acting like he's, a, he's, he's really concerned and blah, blah, blah. But then later I find out that he, he, he asked Rocco if they had it on videotape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, had to. The lecture Rocco got was like, if you're gonna do it, <laughs> right. you gotta film it. And like at least three cameras, at least a three camera shoot. Yeah, yeah. Because you're going to want to slow it down. You're going to want to see it from a different angle. <laughs> right. Slow-mo. Where's the slow-mo? Does your son have any interest in fly fishing yet? Yeah. We'll go okay. a- every trip. Every t- We've gone out three times now. And, and uh, we've gone, I think we've gone out fishing, he and I, uh, once every time. So that's good. Those are good, like, father-son memories. And he's good. He's a good fisherman. I have another quick question about just logistics of fly fishing. How far away does your son have to be from you? Because I know you can't stand side by side when you're fly fishing. Well, we're in opposite sides of a boat. It's a it's a big fly fishing. Oh, so boat. you do it from a boat too? Oh yeah, yeah, you do okay. it from a boat. And so it, you and never do you have you ever done the the time I did it? I was standing in the water. Have you done that? There have been times that I've gotten out and done it for like a little spell. Gotcha. But uh, and Kimmel's like an amazing fly fisherman. Like he's <laughs> really really good at it. And like he, you know, for him, like the bigger the challenge, the more fun it is. Like. It, it's right. this whole other thing. Well, I would say then catching it with your hands. <laughs> right. I mean, let's be honest. Or catching it with my hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Even tougher. Sort of like, uh, like whose line is it anyway? He has. To, you have to put your hands underneath <laughs> so it looks like his hands. And then you have to catch a fish. I can barely catch it with like, you know, TNT and a, and a big hock of meat. But if you go out for a day in, in Idaho, what's an average haul for tapper? It's all catch and release. You throw them all back. But it's probably. So, but, you know, how many catches? Maybe like. On a good day, like uh, somewhere between 10 and 20. And how many hours are you out there? A long time. You'd be out there from like 10 to like four. That's pretty rewarding. I mean, I think 20 fish in six hours, that must feel nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'm probably overstating when I say 20, but like 10 to 15, let's. Well, it's a fish story. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, a lot of the people who are there are one day going to be guests on this. So we'll just be checking in with them. If we, yeah, if well, I think I'm, 20 I'm, is higher low. I know people who are, I mean, I am one of the worst fishermen on the trip. I'll just say that right now. Who's number two after Kimmel? You know who caught, you know, caught a big fish his first time out was Mulaney. There we go. Oh. We got a new name. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? Guess what? I just caught one because that's what I was fishing for. I knew if I asked, you wouldn't go back. You'd give us a, another name. Uh-huh. Mulaney, Mulaney's a good fisherman. Well, there you go. He caught a big one. I'm going to try to get it back to these these family trips. Real but this, quick, but this is just for the record. This has all been a family trip. Just it's been a modern yeah, thing. Josh, yeah, yeah. Josh, I should note, is now becoming a real purist about the pod. Jake. Is that right? He doesn't like when we get off track. Seth okay. loves talking about backstage stuff, Hollywood stuff. Yeah. Get that somewhere else. <laughs> we were here to talk about family trips. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for keeping it pure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are going to keep veering back into your 
sort of. Well, I'll go back to the to the to the camping trips to Canada. One with my right. mom and one with my dad. It's separate ones because of the divorce. And I'll say both and both of them featured breakdowns of the camping apparatus. Mm. The RV that my mom rented, she was you know she was a nurse in Philadelphia, didn't make a ton of cash, and the RV she rented. I think the I think what my brother or I said when we first saw it in the rental agency was like, you know, you're like you drive in and there are all these incredible campers and RVs and with she, my my mom points to the one that we're we're getting in and one of us said that old box, <laughs> which is just you know what a rude, <laughs> yeah, this poor blue collar nurse has saved up for months to take her sons on a trip. Do you hear about that comment or does she sort of no, just swallow she, she, that? She, no, no, she yeah. never, okay. never brought it up again. Mm. I remember saying it, that old box. Anyway, it breaks down in Maine. It breaks down in a town called Monson, Maine. And, uh, and the part like has to be ordered. So we're like stuck in this town with nothing to do. And uh, yeah, that was, it was, it was rough. And then another, um, like literally what we did was, we found an old basketball and we found like a milk crate and we like just for hours just shot baskets into a milk crate that was like, you know, seven feet up or like not even. And then the other thing was the uh, the camper that my dad rented uh, and attached to my stepmom's Chevy Impala. You know, you fasten it, you know, you yes. fasten it to the I don't know what all that stuff is called, whatever. No, I don't either. But I know that, uh, yeah, they have to be fastened. <laughs> they have to be fastened. And at some point he took a turn. And it broke off. It's pouring rain. Pouring rain. We're in Canada. The thing is broken off. And then so at some point, the decision is made to for us to go into a ho- to get a hotel room. And the o- only hotel and the only room is an expensive one. And mm. there was like softcore porn on the TV. And the movie's name was Vanessa. Wow. So that's it. Those are my memories. And you couldn't you couldn't turn the TV off. We kept turning you, it off. My dad and room. stepmom kept turning it off, and all the kids were united in laughing and laughing and turning it off. It wasn't so, even the movie itself. It was like a preview for the movie that kept airing on the ah, in-house right, cable yeah. channel. Hotel you TV. can buy so, this. You could buy this for yeah, for $7.99 or whatever it was at the time. And the yeah. movie's the movie was called Vanessa. Mm-hmm. If we had been in a um sort of car trailer situation and the uh it became unfastened i would have absolutely no confidence in my dad's ability to fix it oh but i certainly would have confidence that he would try and that uh he would also not maintain a a level of cool over the course of this oh boy was that your dad he was not no a not First of all, let me just say, very. Both my parents are alive, although I don't think they're interested enough in in me that they'll be listening to every podcast I do, including <laughs> the, including this one. I don't even think they know what podcasts are, to be completely no, honest. But then, you know, if they if they listen to this, they'll get that info that they're both still alive. <laughs> well, somebody pretty. might tell them about it. Ted, I heard a, I heard your son on the Seth, this the Seth Myers, uh, Josh Myers family trips podcast. Who well, we'd be really impressive if it had that name recognition from an old person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we're gunning for. My dad would, by the way, but he would he would be happy because he would immediately would assume that you're both Jewish, of course. Even though of I course. know you're, I know you're not, and I know you have the whole routine, and it's and it's good, it's a good shtick. Yeah, it's but good. Um, yeah. what does that mean? Shtick. What is shtick when you say shtick? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, the girlfriend I took to Greece, you'll appreciate this. Sarah Feinberg, not Jewish, hmm. not wow. Jewish. Sarah Feinberg. Um. And I didn't tell my dad that she wasn't Jewish because I just wanted him to assume that she was Jewish. Yeah. Why would I provide the other information? I would say you got, there's three data points there. Yeah. It was Sarah Feinberg brought a hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> Although from West Virginia. I mean, that's, that's, oh, there it. you go. So, um, at one point, we'd been dating for like six months, and uh, I think it, uh, we were getting pretty serious. And uh, I, she went to synagogue with me for the I Have Holy Days. I was complaining about the services to my dad because that's what that's what my, my people do. Um, complain, and specifically about services. He said, well, what did Sarah think? And that's when I chose to tell him the truth. It occurs to me, Father, that you probably are under the impression that Sarah Elizabeth Feinberg <laughs> is Jewish. <laughs> But at that point, I'd gotten this the commitment that she uh, w- that if it got serious enough, she would convert. But it didn't. It never got there. Right? Well, six months you got that you got that commitment. Six well, months. Well, it was in. like we were in our thirties. You know, we were on okay. the track. Yeah. yeah. Third date 
Alexi told me, um, when we have kids, we're going to raise them Jewish. Third date. Oh, I got it. I got it out of my wife, Jennifer. I got it on the first date. You got her to agree. Wow. I, I said, I said, if, yeah, I mean, it was yeah. a first date conversation at that point because I was in my mid thirties. Anyway. Yeah. How did this all come up? Feinberg. Uh, Myers. I think it podcast. You just did it out of cruelty to Josh who wanted you to stick. <laughs> oh, you said shtick. Oh, you said shtick. No, no, no. But we were also talking about your dad and you were saying both my parents. No, oh, wonderful guy. Lost. Smart doctor. Very caring person. Not handy. No. With a broken car thingy and um, and not cool as a cucumber with a broken car in the pouring rain with five bratty kids in Canada. Definitely not. Our dad always had something wrong with his car that was dry. It would always drive him insane. Oh, yeah. For example, he would say, there's a knock. It was he was like it was like the telltale heart always with his <laughs> like just something. <laughs> Because he had killed somebody. Because he had killed a woman. Yeah, he did. I, well, I, that's what we think. And then we found out that he had hit a drifter with his car. <laughs> right. And that the knock. <laughs> right, in was. the trunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so he would always tell us stories about how he'd brought the car to get it serviced and tried to explain the knock. And they all thought he was crazy. Does that ring a bell, Josh? Yeah, he had, I remember he had a, a Lincoln Town Car and he got uh, like hubcaps. They were wire wheels. <laughs> Um, and it was like just a, you know, a pretty thing. Like they were cool, but there was some little tick that would happen, but there would always be like, there'll always be a knock. He'll get in my car in LA and be like, this is making a noise over here. Yeah. He hears ghosts in cars. And then he brings it to a mechanic and says, find the ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those ghost hunter shows where they bring that, yeah. like, you know, green light into houses. We should just do a show where it's just people doing that for dad's car. Just yeah. Some- Weird dude with a long gray ponytail and just make sure it's not a blue light. Yeah, that's true. You don't want a blue light in my dad's car. <laughs> <laughs> they filmed. Uh, they filmed Vanessa in the backseat. <laughs> it's a classic. We, still my dad was just it. telling a story about that Lincoln Town car, which I also remember. Which is, I totaled it, and uh, I was driving with my friend, and it was icy New Hampshire roads, and it was a, also I was probably seventeen. It's an insane car for a seventeen-year-old to drive, like a big Lincoln Town Car. But it was, you know, the only option. And I went off the road and landed it on top of a rock wall, like a Robert Frosty rock oh, wall. Yeah. And I called. I had forgotten this that I called my dad, and his memory of the conversation is that I said, uh, "There's something wrong with the car," and he said, "What? What's wrong with it?" And I said, it's, "I think it's better if you just come and look." <laughs> And he said, is it, is, it, is it running? And I said, it's not running. And, uh, and it was, we were just one street over at this cul-de-sac that a bunch of our friends lived on. So then he took my mom's car and he came over. And we walked. Uh, he asked me, he's like, you want to go for a walk? And I was like, okay. Oh, you walked over. Yeah, I was there. And, uh, and I remember him saying, uh, next time, feel free to describe that as uh, it's on top of a fucking rock wall. <laughs> It was like three days after you got insurance. I feel like you got your license. Oh my god! Yeah, and then it took like a couple, you know, a week or whatever, and you got insurance. It was oh, like you would just the start worst. driving. Yeah. All right, I have a, but I can remember. I'm going to be impressed. I've got a trivia question for both of you because I remember the song that was playing on cassette tape when it crashed. Okay. The song was uh, that song. Back to life. Back, back to, to reality. Who sang that song? Hello, Neil Bonnet. Hello, Neil Bonnet. Right? A soul to soul. Soul to soul is correct. No, yeah. nice. Very well done. I had Dad, it. just I'm wondering when, when um, does this car have a wall? Does it have a wall? What do you mean, does it have a wall? Because the car has a wall now. Yeah, does the car, I guess the best way to say it is like the car now is, is either the car is part of a wall or a wall is part of the car. <laughs> the car is at one with a wall? Was it like that before? Yeah. I can't remember, Dad. <laughs> was this wall here? Was this when I when you bought the car, did it have a wall? Because you get upsold easily. Did the dealer maybe sell you a I'll wall? I'll throw in a wall. <laughs> I'll throw in a flinty wall. You know, uh obviously all our family trips were with our parents. Um, both of them. Were the vibes massively different when you were on vacation with your mom or vacation with your dad? Yes. My mom's a pleaser. Okay. My mom was trying to please her two boys. And, yeah, and that, uh, she would she would have done anything to make us happy, and yes, and the and the family trips with my dad and stepmom were um, not that. 
Mm -hmm. Did he sort of have his own agenda? Was your dad a guy who would plan out the things he wanted to do on vacation? And you, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't honestly, I don't think we did any other trips with all of us ever again. I think from then on, it was like (laughs) Shelly, my stepmom, and the girls would do a trip, and my dad and me and my brother would do a trip. Did you look forward to that when you were going on vacation with your dad? Or I remember a lot of trips to like Sturbridge Village, like Mm -hmm. whaling. Isn't that like a whaling town in Massachusetts? Yeah. I feel feel like places where you could look at scrimshaw carvings Mm -hmm. on whalebone. Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? (laughs) So you were not looking forward to it. (laughs) I mean, mean, are you looking forward to scrimshaw? You tell me. You're a 14 year old boy. And and you're and you yeah. get to do anything you can do. I think uh, it, I think it might have been Scrimshaw. <laughs> well, you're from New Hampshire. You're from think, New Hampshire. Yeah. So I'm Scrim- thinking back, and I you do might think have Scrimshaw. It, I think the answer blood. is Scrimshaw. <laughs> I do briefly want to circle back in case Josh doesn't know this story. But and again, hopefully Josh will allow it because it's about uh, the a famous first time. person. Uh, for no, famous. it's about Jake and I. So, but it's about two famous people. <laughs> so um, <laughs> there was uh, uh, in Martha's Vineyard. I guess a whale, a dead whale washed up. And so there were whale bones on the beach. And uh, wait a second. How long was it? How long was, how long was this whale sitting on the beach? <laughs> it was, uh, I just remember, man, we Years? just heard it moaning for a year. <laughs> no, just, uh, just a year of whale rotting. I just feel like my father-in-law and my brother-in-law all of a sudden got real excited. Cause you know, it's like, Hey, dead whale. And then <laughs> sure. they somehow got a whale bone. Yeah, and they were so excited. There's a whalebone, and then they just you know what you know where it is, Josh. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. it? It's like lashed to a, a post on the porch. I hope that the um, statute of limitations here have passed because I I sense that it might be illegal to remove a whalebone from a beach. It depends on whether or not you've you've carved on it. I mean, I think I, I think it's really just a question of. But it, to me. It was so deeply stupid that they put all this work into getting this whalebone back. And then all they did was tie it against the post of a porch. And yet, I would say five times a summer, I hear someone going, cool whalebone, Tom. <laughs> like, I mean, people are, are just over the moon that they know a guy who's got a whalebone. I like it every time I see it. So funny. Yeah. You make it sound like it's, it's really uh, lashed to the porch in a very haphazard and unartistic kind of way. Like um, I was, I will say, I was thinking the word lashed before he said lashed. Oh, is that right? That that is, I mean, it is. But he's also his father in law is a, a home builder, so he knows what he's doing with with rope. Yeah, um, it's on there. Had Seth, Seth would have like tied it to the porch, and it would not be a good a mm. good knot. Quick correction. Seth would have left the bone where it was. <laughs> you wouldn't have left yeah, the house fair. to go look at the I would not have disturbed right? the whale grave. Right. Yeah. That's the I, knock Tom's going to hear. I'm still curious about the, the people of Martha's Vineyard just letting a whale rot on the beach. Again, first. I don't know the details. I just know that all I want to say it was, was like, it was a beach that like people don't go to. It was like just a... A part of the shore, and it was. It's called it's it's called Dead Whale Beach, so it doesn't get a lot <laughs> but of. But had it been attacked by, I feel like the whale bone washed up. It wasn't like he ripped a bone off a carcass. I don't believe it, it had wasn't... to have been. He had well, to at it... some point, but I don't. There were two bones, and he and Tolia each took a side and made a wish. No, I don't know. I feel like we're gonna do some digging, um. And find out the real story of the whalebone. I do think, Josh, at some point we should just have Tom because he is family at this point. I think Tom, Tom, my father-in-law, who is so endearing and lovely, mostly it would just be great to have him on, tell his stories, and then have his two daughters on to correct him. My father-in-law gave a speech at our wedding. And this is the most, the perfect illustration of his relationship with my wife, Alexi. He said, uh, you know, I'll never forget a trip we took to Barcelona and uh, my wife screamed, we've never been to Barcelona. <laughs> that was, I, that's how it started. His, it's a good his speech. speech for his By the way, if he, if he does get in trouble for the absconding with, uh, uh, with whale bone from yeah. the beach, which I'm sure is in violation of many Massachusetts statutes, I'm sure that Tom can prevail upon local defense attorney Alan Me? Dershowitz. <laughs> Alan Dershowitz, who is, Dershowitz. who is who I do not know, but yeah, but he yeah, is a member we, of uh, yeah, we a, know. of your circle, of your Martha's Vineyard circle, I believe. Yeah. He's a he's a uh, I, I am a uh, there's a circle of constitutional scholars, right? Of which I am a, and we just believe that uh, 
that the the law the law is blind when it comes to whales <laughs> comes to whales <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the jury jake i want to because again we're talking about my father-in-law the first time jake and i met and i should note this was one of the nice things about twitter early on now i know that jake is already calling it x i still call it twitter <laughs> so uh twitter x for jake so you would actually meet people on Twitter, and that's how we met. We uh, we DM'd. Astoundingly, as I recall it, you reached out to me, which which is which is I, I say I'm surprised because you are a much bigger deal than me. Yeah, but he's also thirsty. Yeah, very thirsty. I thought you were going to be my back door to being friends with Kimmel. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> you should have just been. You should have just been more upfront about it. I would have. I did you. reach out to you. I was a fan of yours, and uh, and we. Got I to think be I was in friend. Pittsburgh. Oh, maybe that was it. I think I was in, I was either in Pittsburgh or New Hampshire, but it was one, it was some place that you had a tie to, uh, Pittsburgh being that you're a Steelers fan, right? You're a Steelers yeah. fan. Yes. And you were, I think I was in Pittsburgh with, with Obama because I covered Obama and, uh, and you reached out, you like recommended a sandwich place. Is that possible? Oh yeah. Probably the original, the hot dog or Permanis. Or Permanis. Permanis. Yeah. 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 So um, that, that's but what I reached it was very out, nice. and then we got to be friendly. But then I came to. I like that you also probably suggested the two top sandwich places if you had Googled them. <laughs> it's okay. Like one of the best places in Pittsburgh. But if it came from me, then <laughs> I'd get the credit. <laughs> These little hidden gems. <laughs> this might have been we pre-Google. <laughs> <laughs> it was pre-Google. Might, it might have been Bing. It might have been. Everybody was on Bing at the time. It was Bing. This is before everybody was Xing. We were on yeah. Bing. So. Right. I was just on Yahoo. Oh, then Jake, uh, when I came to do the correspondence dinner, uh, Jake and his lovely wife, Jen, took uh, Lexi and I out to dinner. He took us to a real foodie place. Because you told me you were foodies. Yeah. And then we went to this foodie place in uh, in D.C. and it was a wonderful meal. But it was really funny because uh, there was one thing on the menu, Josh, that Alexi would not eat. Can you guess what it is? Based on 2011, Alexi. 2011. Uh, I mean, something with gluten? No, think about mm. her pets in 2011. Oh, goat. Yeah, she wouldn't eat goat. And yeah. the tappers brought us to a restaurant where one of the one of the one of the meal one of the dishes was goat. <laughs> yeah, she had a goat. Uh, yeah. She had a goat. So she had here. a pet goat named Raisin. Yeah. And I I think I actually knew that, but I also did not know that they were going to be serving goat. It was a foodie place. So like they just brought you food, you right. know, they, they were, you didn't order anything. You just, you just, sorry about my dog. Uh, that's Clementine. Yeah. I got that's Seth's okay. baby out here. So yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we're about to get a new puppy, by the way. It's very Ooh, exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. Well, you know, Winston, my, my dear dog, uh, Winston uh, passed yeah. away a few weeks ago. Rest anyway, peace. Um, yeah. So they brought goat and it was like a big thing. Between Alexi and Seth, it was like a very uncomfortable moment. They brought goat yeah. out. And I said, well, you, I asked you if you had any dietary restrictions and you right. said, you said you didn't. And Seth goes, I didn't think you meant pets. <laughs> well, hold on. I also was just, I mean, it's crazy. It would be even crazier if you said, do you have any dietary restrictions? And I said, we don't need goat. <laughs> that would be an insane thing to say. <sighs> and now my sister-in-law has pet ducks and she won't uh, eat ducks. So let me just say, I mean, it's yeah. not though. It wasn't. It wasn't raisin, right? It wasn't our goat. I not feel that like I know of. I'm not sure. It no. could have been related, though. It could have been raisin's kin. Most goats are related. It's sort of like uh, oh. Genghis Khan. It's uh, all goats. <laughs> I see. Are, are in some way, yeah. And all goats go. That's to what makes their eyes uh, sideways and uh, look like they're all <laughs> That's sort, sort of reading. Uh, That's isn't that a cake song, by the way? Goats go to heaven, sheep go to hell, or is it the other oh, way I around? Think, oh, it is a cake song. Oh, but it's, it us. might be the other soul way around. Soul to soul, cake. And now we're going to take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. This show today is sponsored by BetterHelp. And you guys, Josh, you and I, we've had times in our life where we have faced tricky decisions. And sometimes the answers are not obvious to us. And it's very helpful to talk with someone when you're trying to navigate life. Yeah, having a therapist is a great way to have someone to speak to and get some advice and maybe sort of change a cyclical way of thinking that you have and maybe give you a better approach to a problem. I always feel good. I always feel better after speaking to a therapist. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, 
Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. And that's a really important thing because sometimes I think the hurdle for a lot of people to get over is when am I going to do this? It's not going to fit into my busy calendar. So BetterHelp has taken that into account and they're ready to meet that challenge for you. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash trips today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash trips. Jake, you just finished um, a family vacation with your kids and wife yes. and you guys went to Paris France. or France? Just yeah. Paris? Yeah, mainly Paris. We did a, we did a day up in uh, Normandy Beach. And we did it, but we did a family that, that this was a very big experiment to see if we could do something like this. We'd done Caribbean and we've done California and we've done uh, Idaho, but we'd never attempted anything like this. And I mean, I think it was successful, but we also called it early. We, um, cause CNN was kind of kindly, but also somewhat passive aggressively suggesting to me that it would be better if I were in the anchor chair when the Trump indictment came down. Sure. Remember, there was like a Thursday, Friday last week when they thought it was coming down. And it turned out it was just something else. It was like some other guy at Mar-a-Lago or, or, right, right. or, or, or Trump Doral or whatever. But anyway, so I looked into how expensive it would be if we canceled the last three days of the trip and ended up being negligible. So I asked the family and they were all like, yep, let's go. Let's go. Let's go home. Interesting. So they were ready to go. Yeah, I, I am the more adventuresome, more willing to be gone for like two weeks person in the family. And it goes in order of my wife is the least willing to leave the home, uh, followed by my son. And then my daughter is closer to me. Where do they want to go if they were to go somewhere? Like what? Was it just too far away? Too long? I think a, the, the whole sleep schedule being out of whack for like a month is not fun, which mm-hmm. I agree with that. And then also... I think it's the duration. I think like four or five days is the max. But m- both my kids are super athletic now. And Alice is really into crew. And Jack is really into football. So they also missed like really intense workouts. Because they're 15 and 12. I think I, if I remember 13, that, yeah. Yeah. that age, I had a social life. And in the summer, the idea of it just, I, no matter where you were, it felt like missing something. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of FOMO. Um, but also just... I think we, you know, one of the lessons we learned from vacations is that we need to have an activity at least a day. Right. Or else people get really bored. Like, I'm fine going to the beach and reading and sleeping all day. Like, I am fine doing that. Yep. Sign me up. But they are not. So we need to do at least an activity a day. We had too many activities. Because you used to go to camp in the summer, yeah? I did. Eight weeks. I still can't believe I would. they would ship us off for eight weeks. That's nuts. Your kids ever go to camp or no? They've tried. Alice Alice has been okay going away for a week or two. Jack hates it so much. Oh, wow. It's not, it's, you know, it's a very Jewish thing, I feel like, to go yeah. away to camp for like two months. Mm-hmm. When Jen and I married, like, and I told her, you know, I would spend summers like away from my family for like two months. Like she was just like, oh, we're not going to do that. Yeah. She made a good point. It's kind of crazy. Especially as your kids get older and you start seeing the sort of end of them yeah. living with you. But did you, I, because I have a lot of friends, and I will say the higher percentage of them are Jewish that did this and went away for eight weeks, and they loved it yeah. so much. And yeah. they're closest friends. These are friends of mine from college, and they have far tighter friends from those camp years than anywhere else. Was that you? Did you love it? No. Interesting. No, I, I, I loved it until I was like 12 or 13. And then uh, I was, you know, more, a little bit more bookish. Yep. which is not a trait that does well at camp, even a Jewish yeah. camp. Yeah. You, you, just because it's a Jewish camp doesn't mean we're we're all sitting around studying. It's yeah. uh, it was, it was <laughs> just all reading the Talmud, yeah. little canoeing, <laughs> and then mostly Talmud. What do you got there? The Times Business section. Can you pass? No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was um, no. It's the same as any other camp. The guys, the big athletes with the big shoulders, got the girls, and the yeah. n- nerds didn't. I loved, you know, my summer. And I'm I'm certainly uh, not that Josh isn't bookish, but I think I enjoy my my first choice is to sit and read a book. And I remember just being in my bedroom with the windows open in the summer, just lying in bed reading a book and thinking that was the absolute pinnacle of how a summer should be spent. Have you read this book? I Ooh. haven't read it, but I'm so glad. Josh, will you allow it? 
Will you allow the book plug? I'll allow it. All the Demons Are Here, the new the new thriller by Jake Tapper I'm holding up right now, which Seth was nice enough to do a little Instagram photo of. Um, this is, I mean, again, I it, jealousy is the wrong word, but I should, I'm going to frame it as a positive. I'm so massively impressed. This is your third. Third novel, yeah. I feel like you must structure your time very well to uh, do your job and also manage to now write three novels in the course of what, five years, seven years? Uh, yeah, s- uh, seven or and eight. This, uh, these are only the three fiction novels. You've right, I wrote three things. nonfiction. Yeah. Uh, and Josh, I don't have your address, but send me, text me your address and I'll send you a copy too. Yeah, I would love to have one. He doesn't love to have his address out there. It does, I, yeah. I said text it. You don't have to give it to me right now. Yeah, I know, but you've obviously, you've, you've mentioned so many famous people. I, I I don't think we can trust you to not get the address out there. I'm sure okay. you've sold a ton of these books, Jake, but it also looks like you have thousands of them stacked up behind you. <laughs> there I, is a real, <laughs> I, Jake has been doing some some media hits because I've been doing media so hits. I, I, I actually just put this up. I was just trying to figure out. I had like a 20, 20 books uh, in the foyer and I put them behind me. Is that, uh, oh, I thought, I I didn't know that was one deep across. I thought it was like maybe 20 stacked oh, up. No, 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 I just, just <laughs> I don't know. I was just trying to. Be creative. It looks great. So all the demons here. There's a third book in a series, and these are fiction, but they also play off uh, your uh, deep knowledge of history. Both, and it should note, like kind of fun history. Like this I is hope. this yeah. is this is seventy seven. This is evil Knievel. This is Elvis. Also, this is an v- incredibly fraught time. Yeah, I think sometimes people forget the late seventies was. Awful. I think we all assume we're living through the most fraught time. It was pretty fraught back then because we'd just yeah. gotten through Watergate and the Vietnam War. Although, you know, we've also today just gotten through January 6th and the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. So, I mean, maybe it's yeah. similar. We, and I know this is not a, a podcast about uh, books. I just want to, I did, I did want to mention it. That's all. No. The idea for including Evil Knievel, I should note, came from Jimmy Kimmel, just so you know. Wow. Now, I also want to say real quick, because I do think um, I have a great love of what I would call a beach read. And this, I do think your book is a, is a wonderful beach read. I think you'd like it, honestly. When were you guys born? What year were you guys born? I was born in uh, 73. and 76. Okay. So you wouldn't remember these events, but I, so I was born in 69. So the only thing I remember from 77, which is the year that this takes place, is Elvis dying and disco. That's really it. But when I went back to do this book, because the first book takes place in the 50s, the second in the 60s. So then I, I picked 70, the 70s for this one. When I went back, and, and you're right, Seth, it was just like a really wild time. Not just fraught, also like insane. Like the Studio 54 disco era was, there was a lot more sex and drugs in the 70s than the 60s, to be, to be frank. Yeah. It's also funny that the the footprint of that time is a lot shorter than I think it's cultural Agreed. relevance. You're surprised when you look back at how long Studio 54 was a thing. And it, yeah, and it came out in 77. It, it launched in 77. But also every like 77 was Star Wars. 77 was Saturday Night Fever. 77 was Elvis dying and the Nixon Frost interviews and all this other stuff. But I, I feel guilty because I know I, I know Josh is getting irritated because this is a podcast about family trips no so no, no. I, I this i, I appreciate like, the no. indulgence i appreciate no. the indulgence i mean we can't we can't <clears throat> talk like we can't have people talk about tv shows right now because of the strike but if you wrote yeah. a book we can talk about a book so i'm happy to talk about it we're book. pretty happy to have a plug that is yeah uh, i also feel like it's sort of been glossed over that maybe i don't read but i do read and i'd be happy yeah. to read your book yeah I, I'm, I'm offering a free one yeah uh, you don't have to pay me just yeah. send it to me and I'll send it to Josh because I can really tell he doesn't <laughs> want to give you his address. There's just. <laughs> I mean, is there a is there a local library that I could send it to and just have them hold for Josh Myers? Is that I mean, why would that don't be better? you? Why doesn't Josh go buy it and you just Venmo him? <laughs> is that maybe the best way to do this? <laughs> or PayPal if that's better for you, Josh. Whatever. Yeah. Can I just ask this because this is summer. Obviously, you're working. Obviously, you're covering indictments. There's no rest for you. True. But I want to ask. Does the summer feel a little bit nicer being on the other side of your book coming out? Because I imagine not just the writing of it, but then what about a year, a year and a half after you finished that it actually came out? What's the lead time for a book like this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I fin- I handed in the first draft uh, about a year ago, but then you know, then you edit and edit and edit. So 
with Twitter all weird and the late night shows, it's been a lot more challenging selling the book than in the past. Well, I do. Uh, the nice thing about books is people come back around. And it is a, in a series as well. Right. You don't have to read the others to get this one, though. It's, no, but it's... I think the drag for you is you have to write a fourth one. We'll be back on. We'll help you plug the fourth one on all the late night shows. And then people who maybe forgot about this one will be like, oh, there you go. I didn't even realize there was a third one. You're going to see a huge spike. Or I just give it a new title and sell this book again, pretending it's a fourth Ooh, book. There you go. Yeah. And I call it the Myers, the Myers Chronicles. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, or just change the names, change a few names. Cause I know it's a, there's a brother and sister. Yeah. Just so make it, just, just make brothers. it Seth and John, John. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think with a, like a Robert Ludlum esque title, like the Myers yeah. conundrum. Yeah. The mm. Myers fine. You know, conundrum is better. Well, I was going to say the Myers mysteries, but that sounds like a that's TV a show. That's a kid's book. Or that's like a yeah, Hardy, yeah, yeah. Hardy Boys. Right. But that would yeah. be good. Did you guys read the Hardy? No, Josh doesn't read. Seth, did you read the Hardy Boys when you were? <laughs> yeah, Josh is uh, functionally illiterate. Um, yeah, no, uh, I read Hardy Boys. I did, you know, one of my one of my first sketches, I, Encyclopedia Brown, to be honest, yes, more than Hardy Boys. loved Encyclopedia yeah. Brown. I think that was... Uh, but I don't think I ever solved any of them. I think I no. just ran to the back and read the explanations. No, no, no. I think so, too. I am in a room in Seth's house right now, and he is reading great short books now. Hold on. <laughs> he doesn't Hold like on. the long ones. Yours might be too long for might him, be too long. He likes the little shorties. <laughs> no, here's what great short books was a gift, a Christmas gift from mom. Oh. And she gave uh -oh. it to me, <laughs> and she said... I'm sorry, I thought this was a collection of short books, but I think it's just descriptions of short books. Is that what it is? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I love how she realized what it was as she was giving it to you. The wrapping paper wasn't even off, and she explained. <laughs> Are you reading anything now? Like, on, I, I mean, I know this isn't a beach summer for you, but... Um, I'm reading a ton. I'm often reading many things at once. Interesting. And you probably read a fair amount of nonfiction. You strike me as a nonfiction guy. I'm reading right now about the French resistance because when we went to France, my son and I, Jen and I, Jen and Alice went shopping and Jack and I went to, Jack's a real World War II buff. So in addition to going to Normandy Beach and, you know, uh, and seeing, and the, and the Normandy Cemetery, we did this, uh, we visited the um, French resistance museum, which is a brand new museum in uh, France that was very empty. Um, and I think it's because they are very embarrassed about their role in World War II. And the, and the Resistance Museum is very like eyes open about how many French were collaborators or just went along with, uh, with the Nazi mm -hmm. regime. And uh, anyway, so I, did, I knew nothing about the French Resistance. And there was a guy named um, Jean Moulin who like headed the Resistance. And so I'm just, I'm reading a book about him. He's really- He's like, we're not cool with this. Yeah, he was, he famously, obviously in French. Nespa. Right. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen the movie Army of Shadows? No, is it good? It's great. It's a yeah. it's a wonderful French resistance movie uh that you have to see immediately. Is it fiction? It is fiction. It's uh it's uh, 19 late 1960s, I want to say. Army of Shadows? Uh, Army it's a uh, Melville, Jean-Pierre, Jean-Pierre Melville. Um you guys have so many guests on who write books. Do you guys actually read those books? Oh, good question. I read a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. But some, I, but some the of them you don't. <laughs> well, True. Uh, Jake, I have this issue, which is maybe, so I found early on in late night, I would read all the books, or at least try to. But then if I read too much of the book, my questions were about the book, and I felt like the audience was bored because they didn't want to hear me ask questions about a book they hadn't read. Right. So it's almost better to ask questions. If that's how you want to justify it to yourself, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's what I came up with. I think I it's better just... if I don't read the book. Yeah, I think it's better. I think I... the audience. <laughs> I sound like Not more of an me, expert. For the audience. Yeah, it's about, it's about the audience. I, I, well, no, movies, I, read... I really try. I, don't, I also don't want to lie and say your movie's great or your TV show's great. So if I ever am worried about that, I like to be in a position to say, I'm so excited to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you don't want to say... Boy, that sucked. Yeah. Or or the best, I think the polite would be like, so I saw your movie. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think now as somebody who like puts content out there that you are more generous with your judging of other people's art? 1,000%.
And thank you for, I think that's a very important uh, distinction. Once you start making content and putting it into the world, you realize anyone who has made a film or a TV show or a book, you have such appreciation for everything they were up against uh, creatively. Yeah. Should we ask uh, Jake some questions? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got I to gotta minimize my screen here. You have these are these are the questions we ask our guests, Jake. Oh, everybody gets asked the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like the back of Vanity Fair or that thing at the end of the Actors Studio by James S. Lipton. Yeah. Did you ever get to do the back of Vanity Fair? No, no. Yeah. You know who did? You? Yeah, yeah, me. But <laughs> there you go. You get the Idaho invite. Weird. I don't know. Well, the night is still here. The Proust questionnaire. The Proust questionnaire. Right, right. Oh right. uh, yeah, we used to do those as a family. That's a true thing. We would be driving. And my mom would ask us all our answers to the priest questionnaire. Really? Yeah. So we just do roses and thorns. What's roses and thorns? Oh, you don't know that? Well, it's actually perfect for uh, for your kids at the age they're now. Well, how old are your kids now? Uh, seven, five, and almost two. Yeah, it's perfect. It's a it's an end of the day conversation. At din- it's a dinner table conversation. It's like you're okay. What what's the best thing that happened today, and what's the worst thing that happened today? Roses and thorns. Oh, great! You go around the table. I got it from. There are two things that I got from. Uh, Barack Obama, from President Obama, from covering him. One was Roses and Thorns, uh, because he talked about how he did that with Sasha and Malia. And I thought, oh, that's smart. It's a good way to prompt a conversation. And then the other one was when I do Q&As anywhere, he would always do, let's go boy, girl, boy, girl, uh, which is a way to make sure that women are heard. Because otherwise men monopolize and women, for whatever reason, don't raise their hands as much, which is the and top. You know what? I will use this. Uh, I will shout out the other author in the Tapper family, yeah. Alice Tapper, now 15. How old was she when she wrote? It's Raise Your Hand, right? Raise That's Your the, Hand, 11. 11. So uh, Jake's uh, daughter wrote a wonderful book about uh Is your uh, daughter old enough to be read a book about this? Because we'll send you one. Alice will write one, uh, sign it to her. I'll give you Josh's address. You can send it to her. <laughs> She's um, almost two, but she'll get there. She's she's almost she's two. smart. She's, she's definitely but anyways, smart. The boy girl boy girl thing. I'm telling you, it's 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 great because otherwise it just ends up being men at the microphone. Yeah, that's yeah. very good. All right, Josh is going to fire. Away. Give me the Proust. Hit me with the Proust, Marcel. All right, here you go. Uh, your ideal vacation is it relaxing? Is it adventurous? Is it enlightening? Or is it educational? Re- uh, relaxing. Okay. Right. It's me um, drinking on a beach. What do you drink on a beach? What do you drink on a beach? Oh, well, since it's fictitious. I mean, like, uh, I mean, if it's something uh, sweet. Like, so it okay. might be lemonade and bourbon. It might be. Okay. A pina colada. Yeah, maybe. it might be. Yeah. Those are yeah. really fucking heavy, though. You know They're what I mean? so heavy. I, we just had one. Yeah, <laughs> we had them together. And it's like I, a yeah. milkshake. <laughs> it yeah. really is. You know when you have uh, too many of a drink and you forget that you're eating basically like six gallons of ice cream. And then <laughs> right. the next day, you yeah. wonder, what What happened? And it's like, oh, right, just because you, you, it's because at some point the alcohol makes you forget about the caloric intake. But if I'm going to do a pina colada, I'm like, can you make it a lot of rum and just a lot? Like, if I'm going to have a 2000 calorie milkshake. Yeah. Right. You don't want to have to follow it up. No, I just, I don't want to, right. I, I, this, I want this to be the drink. Right. right. But anyway, lemonade and bourbon is actually a good okay. way to get around yeah, that. Good. That sounds good. I like yeah. that. I like the sound. I might of be that. able to put one of those together today. Um, uh, do you prefer to travel by train, plane, automobile, boat, or on foot? Well, we have uh, we have boats now. We became a boat family. We because mm-hmm. um, uh, my because I married a Midwestern girl from Missouri, and she loves lakes. Oh. We actually have a lake house, and I, I have, love lake life. I have two boats. Wow. I own two boats. I own a, a pontoon and a speedboat, and I love them. And I, I yeah, I'm becoming. Uh, a redneck it's really quite a it. thing well there is a lot to say yeah about we've that have friends who say when they're in the pontoon boat no one in a speedboat will wave at them <laughs> and i don't know if you've experienced this no i wave at everybody i wave but at do everybody they wave back. but do they wave back would a speedboat wave at you when you're in your pontoon? they're the snobs the speedboat people are snobbing you yes that's true but i but no like on our lake which is uh lake anna in virginia uh, everybody waves at everybody. It's very That's nice. Great. Okay. Yeah. Good. If you could take a vacation, a family vacation with any family, these people could be alive or dead, but other than your own family, who would you like to go on a family vacation with? Oh, uh, my uh, mom's parents. Uh, it sounds like it's your family. Yeah. 
Yeah, so they can't be your family. Can't be oh, they can't relation. be my family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. They can the be question. fictitious. They could be. Oh, yeah. if I could go on vacation with anyone. Yes. yes. In the world, but it has but to their be family. A, yeah, it has to be a family of yes. yes. Oh. Family trips. That's that's what we're trying to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I know you thought you were on a book talk. I mean, so I can go like on a boat with John F. Kennedy and Jackie Kennedy and John. A and thousand Caroline. percent. You sure can. Off the coast of Hyannisport. I mean, this sounds like your answer. It's a pretty good one. I mean, I'd love to do that. And he's like, he's got sunglasses on. He's smoking a cigarette. He's reading yeah. the Times. Jackie's there. She's taking pictures. He's like, that do you sounds- need a do you need a white sweater, Tapper? Can I get you a <laughs> Can I get you, you a, have one, like a knitted sweater? Greek fisherman sweater? I'll take yeah. it. Can I get you super short white shorts and a big old bulky I sweater? Don't about, I don't know about the short shorts. I might go with the khakis, but I appreciate yeah. it. I yeah. okay. But that sounds right. fun, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. Got yeah. there quick to appreciate it. If you had to be stranded on a desert island with one member of your family, who would it be? Well, my my wife. Right. Okay. Interesting. Okay. It, well, that's not always the way it goes, but it yeah. seems like it is for you. You're very well, confident. how long am I going to be on this island? Okay. Okay. I think let's just give it this is a pure answer let's just let you have it yeah yeah I think Jen well, hopefully she'll listen <laughs> <laughs> I mean will she listen this I deep think, into it I don't know but also like I mean at the mention of the second girlfriend she probably turned it off but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I should know I, I guarantee you Alexi's not listening so I don't know why I'm expecting Jen to <laughs> yeah, exactly um, and then you're from uh, you're from Philly yeah yeah uh, would you recommend Philly as a vacation destination I mean, I don't think of like city, I, like I don't even think of New York or LA as vacation destinations. I, I, for me, like a vacation destination is like wilderness or beach. I mean, yeah. that's honestly, so no, not really, but not because of, like, I think Philly's great. And if you were saying, I want to teach my kids about Benjamin Franklin, I'd say, okay, go to Philadelphia. But yeah. but that's just not how I think of vacations. I think because I live in a city, I, I just think of getting away from cities. Yeah, I, I've never, I've never been to Philly, and I always feel like I would just love it. Um, it's a great, very, it really is a great yeah. city, and there's great food, and there's great museums, and there's great. It's, it's, it's really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next time do Philadelphia is in a uh, sporting uh, championship of some sort, I'll invite the Myers brothers. Or right. maybe I'll invite one Myers brother, and Ooh. that would cause the Myers conundrum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Available now. <laughs> Therein lies the rub. Paradox would be another one, the Myers Paradox. Myers right? Paradox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Right. Conundrum's still better. And then, Seth, you want to ask the last question here? Okay. It's a, a two parter because, based on the first part, there's a follow up depending on the answer. Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? Yes. Okay. Is it worth going? Yes, but it's really hot. Okay. And you really have to plan. You probably went years ago when it was less hot in general. Yes, I went in the 80s on my teen tour. So hot in the 80s is now, this is a, this is a big strike against the Grand Canyon, Josh. But also, you can, I don't think you can go in August at all. Like, I think it's just like, no, don't go to the Grand Canyon in August. It's so hot. You have to go in like June or July. And even then, you're pushing it. I mean, you could also go in October. Theoretically. Yeah. I think they cover it. I think they cover it. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they cover it in the fall, and then they you open it. You say you've never been? No, no, I've never been. And I've been to uh, to the rim, but not below the rim, because I had a dog with me. You can't bring a dog below the rim. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. You can throw it over the side, but they <laughs> say, like, almost no one does that. But then you have to get it out. It's like having your car uh, fall through the ice if you're ice fishing. That's a great movie, by the way. Great 80s movie, Below the Rim. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's about uh, skateboarding, right? Came after Vanessa. <laughs> No, I'd love to go. But I think like, yeah, you can go when it's not hot. I'm pretty so. sure. <laughs> right, but people find that. themselves with a lot of free time in August. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. By the way, one of the things that was fun about France was everybody was about to shut down for August. Right. Like that's what they, they just. Oh, yeah. They don't work in August. Yeah. The entire country shuts down. That's the new, that's the new uh, French resistance. To work in August. If they made them work, they'd go on strike. Resistance to a hard day's work? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to. Look, we got a lot of French listeners uh, <laughs> due to my mom's uh, you know, years of being a French teacher. We've got a real connection. All right. Uh, thank you, Jake. We love you. Thank you so much for joining this us. This was great, guys. Thanks thank so much. Thank you. Jake, his brother, and his girlfriend, they all went to Greece. Not a great idea to travel in threes. They couldn't believe she brought a hair dryer. The Tapper Boys thought that was the end of her. Oh, yeah! Well, now Jake just goes fishing.
obsession with celebrities Dropping names of Batmans and Mulaney's Says Adam Scott is such a lovely chap So tight with Johnny Knoxville calls him PJ Clap But Seth's never been What's with that? I guess that's never been What's with that? He dropped some Aniston Both of the Jimmy's Kimmel and Fallon Courtney Cox and David Chang Mark Roper of a YouTube fame But that's never been Jake rubs it in, what's with that? I know that's never been Jake rubs it in, what's with that?